deprived of the fact uh, I'm going to just, you know, this all happened uh, in the Telegram. And if you are in the Telegram, you can check it. Uh, I'll place it in the description box below. So it all happened in the Telegram. Uh, posted a couple of trades and, uh, you know, we just had fun stuff. That's, that's what, essentially. So this, this was what I was actually looking at. I'm not going to go into all the detail concerning where price was and uh, where I was looking to. Uh, I'm not going to go into all the details concerning you know where price was and you know where my you know long-term bias is. I'm just going to talk about you know how you could have see this move for yourself as well and hopefully get involved. So uh, right of the bat. Okay, uh, but I'm going to mark this out like this. You can see uh, this is the 31st candle. This last candle right here is the 31st candle. And that's the candle we should be looking at before anything else. I see if we are reading it, you know, or we are back testing to say, you know, uh, First thing, I'm not going to, I'm not using tradable premium, so I'm not cutting any chart. That's by the side. And secondly, you've already seen this trade, or most of you guys must have already seen this trade, so you already know what's going on. It's not a matter of me showing you a, you know, a back testing chart, it's just a matter of me explaining what's going on. So if we check the other flow right here, it looks bullish. If I go to the weekly, the monthly, there's a lot of stuff to talk about, but there's no need to do that right now. Let's just see what we have right here. And uh, first, I want to say, whenever price tests another block, the low of that other block becomes a liquidity pool, right? So I just want to put that out in case you see me doing something in the future. You just know, okay, this is where it's coming from. So we had price right here. Let me put my let me draw some lines so you can clearly see okay this is the first if you take your line if you mark let's say we mark this high right this uh, the open of this candle right here right that's the price we want to buy from why are we buying from there you can clearly see this area broke market structure if i'm not seeing it this area right here this was a clear break of market structure to me why was it a break of market structure? Because we beat a fractal high or a swing or a swing high. You can see it. If you don't know what a swing high is, uh, this is it. A swing high is two is two three candles with you know either a higher high or a lower low within it. So for example, this would be a swing low, right? No, no. This this will be a swing low. Now it doesn't matter if the candle is bullish. If this one is bullish, this is bearish. This is bullish. This is bearish. Or it doesn't matter the color of the candle. What does matter is if the thing sweeps like this. We call this a swing low. Same for a swing high. It's just something like this. So if it sweeps like this with two lower highs, you know, you call it a swing high. It's that simple. Let's not com let's not complicate it. And it's only formed with three candles. You see three candles forming it. That's when okay, you know it's forming. Uh, the best way to see it if you really don't, you are not used to seeing it on your, you know, first indicator to just type in frac. And you, I enter Bermudian fractals. It will start displaying a method that needs five candles. Then, as you progress, you should be able to see it with uh, just three candles. You know. Now, back to what I'm doing. You can see this other block got tested by this mitigated. Then, when it was mitigated, it broke its finger, and we saw this rapid impulsive move. You are not going to tell me you can ignore. You know that move. So, where's the next other block? This I was just following the mitigation, or should I say, following institutional order flow. 
and it reacted nicely here. Now, when it reacted nicely here, I'm not getting involved. This was uh, during the holidays and just before January. Now, what happens is that how do you qualify another block? You qualify on other block. Let's say this is a bull candle. So a bear candle. Let me color it. Uh, with my. Let me color it uh, black. Right. Let's say this is a bear candle. Right. How do you qualify this to be a bullish order block? It's when a bull candle trades, for, whether from inside, for whether anywhere it trades from, trades above it. Now, a lot of people usually ask this question: Does it need to close above it? Uh, it doesn't need to close above it. Okay, it just needs to trade above it, even if it's by a week. If it's by a week, it's okay. It's more than okay, okay? So, that's how you qualify a bullish order block. A bearish order block, just slip the scenario and uh, you get what you're looking for. Okay? So, now, you see it here. Big down move. As at this point, as at the, this thing, manifestation of this candle, we are not qualifying it as another block. But when this candle break, it broke this high right here. That's when we started paying attention, considering this as another block, and when it got retested, it was valid. Same thing here. As at this point, we were only considering this bullish candle as another block, we were considering this high. But when everything broke, we knew everything here was another block. So, we could just take the 50% of this and be looking for somewhere to get involved. Now, this is too fancy. I'm not going to go deep into that. Let's just look at how to get a simple market structure and institutional order flow. So, now we saw this bullish order block right here from this down move to this up move that penetrated the high. So, what actually caused our attention immediately is this we measure the 50% of the bodies. That's what I do. I do not count the weeks when I'm trading. Although I put my stop loss below the weeks, but I like to get involved at the 50% of the body. So when we do that, I can only see the result. But upon this candle, this uh, New Year's Eve candle, that's when you have it marked. Then the next day, you see price dipping down into it, and you get ready to buy it. Now let's go to the one hour chart to explain that for the moment. Okay. Now clearly you see where we have it. Where we have the oh, I think we have to go back to the daily to show something else. So it doesn't look as if an hypothetical is. Uh, so it doesn't look as if an hypothetical trade can still be stopped out. You know. So I'm going to mark the lowest low created by this bullish order block right here. So if we have that marked. So if we have that mark, let's continue from where we stop. Alright. So what's the next step? We just need to go to the lower time frame and see how we can get involved. So going to the one hour chart. Why do I like using the one hour chart? It gives me clarity. When I say it gives me clarity, I'm able to see price from a perspective of from an intraday perspective. If the only way I, I use my four hour chart is only when the only way I will use my four hour chart is when the price action the daily is not discernible. Now you can see clearly that the price action these daily candles is discernible. I saw the bullish order block and I was like, okay, I want to buy something from here. Right? If it's a little bit sketchy, let's say there's a lot of weeks and I don't know where the immediate week will reject from and give me a little bit of scalp or anywhere we trace me to trade. I will be thinking, what should I do? Then I move to my forward chart to see if there's any more clarity it can provide. But aside that, I usually just keep from the from the daily to the one hour. So I'm going to open my session breaks just so you can count the days with me, and uh, there will be no ambiguity about it. All. So 
this was Monday's trading. Now, upon Monday's trading, we are expecting to buy on a low to sell at high because we just approached the bullish on the block. So, as we traded right here, you could have made an entry right here and still keep your stop loss here. But no, that had the, there should be some level of precision to your trading. And uh, for me, uh, I wouldn't, I personally, I don't take trades on Monday, so I didn't do that. I didn't buy, you know, I didn't just call this another block and say, okay, if I see a reversal signal, let me just buy it and drag it to the upside, right? No, that's not what I did. This is what I anticipated, essentially. So I said, where are my other blocks that still have a liquidity void? To be filled on the one hour chart right where are they then i checked and i saw you know this though this was the low which we marked out from the daily chart right but this was the main other block the body of the other the candles that were broken because as you can clearly see as soon as we hit a, that specific low we quickly went up to so this was actually a weak move or uh, this actually produced a week on the daily chart so on this retracement i wasn't simply going to be buying from here not necessarily because uh, i was trying to get accurate with my entries but simply because i don't trade uh, during the I, I, don't, I don't trade on monday and uh, i was still waiting for certain confirmation now upon tuesdays Price action. I saw price hovering around the. What would I be thinking of? Selling it right because I wanted to buy at these levels. Now, because a sell trade based on what I have seen on the daily chart was counter trend, I didn't take that trade on Tuesday as well. As you can see, as you notice, if you're in the Telegram channel, I didn't post it as well. So, where would you have been selling from? this other block you would have been considering this the other block that books social so it answer a lot of this facets to it but i don't want to go into that well let me talk about when price actually got to my entry right here so there are two ways i did this i was right here and i pulled my feet Going to delete this 50% now since we already know where it is. Oh no, let me just mark it with a line. Perfect. So let me delete all these. Right, perfect. So this is the 50 percent of ob so now that we have that let's see if i have it oh i, I don't have it so if that's the 50 percent and i just pull my feet where i do where do i ideally buy within this zone or let me see at the top of this zone right however for my intraday perspective this is going to be if i'm framing this this is a swing tree we just you know which is still here which i'm expecting for further target and maybe hitting this place before dropping it's all good though but uh, let's concentrate on what i did upon price reaching here i just moved to my long time frame right which is the 30 minutes as i was in the 30 minutes right I was watching time and price you see when this low formed right i had nothing to do with the price simply because it was forming at the wrong time so i wasn't clicking a buy when that low pretty much formed what was i thinking of waiting out simply considering that it is going to come back down to give another entry sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't especially for this pairs that has some uh, you know currency that can trade during the asian session right so it's easy uh, you can just click on your uh, what is it called your kill zone box 
that if you are looking for a Qzone box to use the the ones uh, the one I use is this uh, okay this is the one I use ICT Qzone box by Bryce WH uh, shout out to the guy I didn't even know him so that's it honestly I don't know him I just take a trick based based on the kill zone and the skill zone is actually correct i when i was looking for a good chat to use i discovered a lot we are usually having some variance from a uh, one hour or two hour one hour thirty minutes you know difference between what ICT teaches and what is being implemented this is the closest to what i could find that would work for me and the uh, article with it so i just put my kill zone and we can clearly see from the price this chart is getting a little bit of messy. Let me remove this. We could clearly see from the price that this low didn't happen during a kill zone. So buying from here, despite it being on the daily chart, means I will have to suffer some drawdown. And that I didn't want to suffer. And uh, you know, it sucks taking a trade from your ideal entry right here and be like uh, stop loss down here and immediately you take the trade. You are riding through that, you are only aiming for further targets, right? It really sucks. You need to look for a confirmation where when you take a trade, you start going directly into profit and not suffering some substantial loss that can really do some psychological damage. So, uh, on the uh, on the 30 minutes chart, when price made the rally off from the 80, and I checked it on the for our chart it provided a week made it down again writing off this other block this one right here and we went back up again i called this this particular move a breaking market structure now why is it a breaking market structure <laughs> you might be wondering check out these candles these three candles Perfect. I can't twist it. Yeah. Check out these three candles. Candle with two lower highs are will at the side of it. That's what you classify as a swing high. So upon this swing are being broken. It was price was bullish for me. So I just had to go to my five minutes chart and get involved on the buy which is this okay now you could see let me delete this now you can see uh, the five minutes chart it was uh, loose quite uh, you know creeps because uh, we're making the eyes as well as then we broke we broke this side this is very clear BOS and we trace me down to another block so when I marked out this place that I will be looking to buy from the top of this other block was simply because the volatility at this point in time I didn't want to miss out the move so I had to mark that out and I did an entry right here stop loss and this low that was very close out to here I think yeah so upon upon this break i just quickly took the entry and uh, where was i targeting i didn't target this huge fee in fact let me just delete it right now i was targeting simply this first do i have a frame of the of the you know huge fee in my head right I have that frame in my head, I know where it's heading for, and we are almost there. You can see I have those areas clearly marked up on the daily chart as well, and on the, you know, one hour chart, so that's not the problem, but entering right there would have been, uh, entering, uh, taking the trade based on the field would have affected my weeks, and I wouldn't be able to take trade the next day, I won't have enough leverage to pull it up. So, because of the confidence I have in this trade, first profit was at the 100% level i closed 50% off right here and uh, 
as at this point I close an additional 45% meaning 90% was off at this point right then uh, it just all kind of rolled to this new eyes then it's clearly showing signs of a reversal with this consultation and further consultation however I got involved in the bar again and saw something here I will explain that very shortly it's still the same uh, it's still the same concept but this is what I did pretty much and uh, it's run for about 125 pips for me before I start monitoring the trade right now I'm not even looking at it I feel uh, upon the open of the session next week I'm just going to close everything because I'm no longer trading I'm just uh, you know I'm, I'm just paying for swaps and it's not really cool so now the next entry this is what I saw I was expecting protraction. Let me go to my 15 minutes. Something, uh, something that can give me enough data. I was expecting protraction to that level, which was the line marked up on the daily chart. I was expecting a target to that level, which was the line marked up on the daily chart. And uh, since I was expecting that target, I knew okay, we could get a protraction to this line after breaking this first level that looked like a good sell for me. So I'm not going to go into this period because uh, we haven't started taking sell trades yet. But uh, this is it. So when price broke this high as well, this fractal high as well, I became interested. It's too simple, guys. Price breaking the fractal high, you start looking for buy opportunity. Price breaking the fractal low, you start looking for sell opportunity. Or you, or you call it swing high and swing low. So when price breaking it, broke it, I start looking for buy opportunities. And I put this retracement down during a Q zone. I pointed the closest low before the impulsive price move that broke the, the high. I point I connected the low the low to the high and got involved on my 69 percent level. And then with spread, I did get a little bit of entry that was a uh, five pips away. I find still okay, and uh, I'm still in this trade, hoping to you know close 50 percent right here and uh, 25 to extra 25 percent right here and leave the last 25 percent hoping that if i catch a reverser i will use that as an edge if the reverser doesn't work well fine that's that simple i did this from a whole for me you know should i say a place where the way where a fall here would obviously be a low resistance liquidity one simply because we haven't gotten to the target not necessarily because i'm just pulling every day no i had to frame it from the daily chart first and from the daily i moved to the one hour chart to define certain entries 